Hello everyone and welcome to this new series on game design, Let's Make. In this series of videos, I'll be recreating some iconic and interesting game mechanics using Unreal Engine 4. I want to focus on exactly how these systems were put together and how the game designers made the games feel so satisfying to play. So to start the series, we'll be looking at the Leviathan Axe Throw from the latest God of War title. The developers at Santa Monica Studio have managed to give a feeling of weight and power to Kratos' new weapon, which makes performing this simple move feel great to use over and over again. So let's dive in and take a look at how they did it. For this project, I've chosen to use the character Gideon, which is a free Paragon character given away by UE4. I had to do some modifications in Blender to the mesh so that his clothes would deform properly with simple animations and decided to remove the front part of his robe as it was causing issues with the cloth simulation inside the engine. I also decided to use this mesh, created by YouTuber Aidan Cadogan, as a base for the axe, then took it into Blender to clean up the textures and alter the shape a little. Once inside UE4, I set up the character for retargeting and added the advanced locomotion system by Longmire Locomotion to set up movement for the character quickly. For this project, I used Chimera's axe throw animation from Paragon, and for the recall, used Phase's magic activate animation from Paragon, which I retargeted to Gideon and modified a bit to get a nice feel. For both the aim pose and catch animation, I decided to key these by hand. Inside the animation blueprint, I've used a ton of different animation blends to get a good approximation of the way Kratos moves. When doing this, I utilized UE4's layered blend per bone node a lot to blend between the upper body animations and the locomotion animations on the lower body. I then broke the move down into five parts. So to aim the axe, I set the character's movement mode to walk only, set the player's rotation to follow the camera's rotation, and lastly contract the camera's spring arm length and offset the camera's position. I made this function reversible by using a timeline so the action can be performed smoothly and be interrupted if needed. The first thing I noticed in the original is that the axe snaps into the centre of the screen when thrown. This snap makes a huge difference to the feel of the game as it allows the axe to follow a straight path directly in front of the camera without having the character move into the screen centre when performing the move. Kratos' axe also rotates smoothly at a constant rate when thrown. To achieve this, I attach the axe mesh to two scene components. One for the axe to pivot around when thrown, and one which the axe will pivot around when lodged in an object. I also noticed that for the first couple of seconds after the axe is thrown, gravity has no effect. This is to make sure it hits its target point for enemies or objects near the character. However, when the axe reaches a certain distance, Gravity takes effect and the axe pitches to the ground. As the axe flies through the air, we perform a short trace using the velocity of the axe to detect any collisions with the environment. When a hit is detected, we store information about that hit and cast the hit actor to its parent class to determine the effect we want the axe to have. If the hit was a breakable object, we call a custom event which breaks the object in the desired direction. But if the axe hits anything else, we stop the axe moving by deactivating projectile movement and stopping the axe's rotation. To lodge the axe in an object, I first created a function which tilts the axe away from the surface so that the handle is always facing down and is not clipping into the object. The function does this by making a rotation from the normal of the impacted surface and then add some randomization to give it a natural feel. The axe's location is then snapped to the exact point that was under the hood reticle when thrown, using the axe point as the axe's center. Finally, if the axe trace found an enemy, I attach the axe to the closest bone that the trace found, and apply a hit to the enemy using a custom event inside their character blueprint. When the axe is stuck in something, it can either wiggle a little, or pull up towards Kratos before dislodging itself. I decided to implement both behaviours, 
which each use a short timeline to rotate the axe around the lodge point using a set of custom curves. To get a return pass similar to the game, I had to set the axe's position dynamically. I do this by first finding the axe's distance from the character and then using this to scale the speed of a new timeline which outputs a set of custom curve values over time. For the return path, we lerp the axe's location from its starting position to the character's hand using two curves, one to drive its speed and another to add an offset out to the right of the camera to create a smooth arc that's clearly in view. For its rotation, I used another two custom curves which tilt the axe whilst in midair. First we roll it sideways and then just before the catch, it rotates back up to land smoothly in the hand. The second thing to do was to spin the axe on return. I wasn't happy just using a constant rate for this spin, as I wanted the axe to always be in the right orientation when it reached the player's hand. So to achieve this, I wrote a simple algorithm which uses the length of the axe's return to calculate the number of spins the axe can take at a set speed. The function then returns the exact length each spin needs to be. I subtracted a little bit from this value before using it to set the axe spinning so that it has the chance to straighten up a bit before it reaches the character's hand. Last but not least, on the axe return we use a trace on tick, like we did on the axe throw, but this time we use a capsule trace to more accurately cover the arced path of the axe. I set this up using the axe location on the last tick of the game as the start point for the trace and the current location of the axe as the end. This ensures we get a smooth, accurate trace over time. And finally, when the return is complete, we attach the axe back to the character's hand and simultaneously play the final animation, which is the catch. This is one of the most impactful parts of the move, and I wanted to really sell this moment just like they achieved in the original. To get the animation to feel powerful, I had to play around with the animation keying a lot, and I also used a notify event to dynamically set the play rate of the montage as the catch animation is being played. This allowed me to play around with values quickly to see how much the character should pause when catching the axe. I then added some camera shake to add extra impact to the move using two separate shakes. One which rolls the camera a little, and a stronger shake which pulls the camera back, up and to the left a bit, in the rough direction the axe was caught. To finish up, I added some sounds and particle effects. The sounds were made using a swung bamboo stick, some brown noise, some metal clanging noises and a whoosh effect, which were mostly downloaded from freesound.org and I also used some of the grunt sounds that came from Paragon. Most of the visual effects were pretty simple to set up, but when Kratos catches the axe, small ice particles are emitted from the mesh. To achieve this, I used a custom particle system, which uses the skeletal vertex surface location node to emit the particles from the vertices of the mesh. I also decided to use a level I've been working on before which utilizes some of UE4's free kite demo content and a purchase pack by Dokio called European Forest. The links for all of the assets I use will be in the description and the project files are free for you to download. So let's see the final result. I will be revisiting this project for another video in the future as I'd love to take on the precision axe throw and the melee combat system. Next time on Let's Make, I'm going to begin tackling the latest Spider-Man game with the aim of recreating the amazing feel of web swinging and the point zip move.
Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.